Hallelujah. How many of you know that we serve an amazing God? He is awesome. He is powerful. Let's rise to our feet and give God glory and honor that is due to him because he deserves it. Hallelujah.
Anybody know that God deserves it? Ooh. He deserves it. 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 Ooh. Anybody know he deserves it? Say he's been real good. Been real good. Said he been real good. Said he been real good. Been to hold the journey. Jehovah needs to hold a mind regulate mind a mind regulate mind a heart fix said a heart fix said a heart fix said a heart fix said he deserves anybody believe it said he deserves he deserves he deserves it yeah 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 said he deserves it you know what let me hit him say it right now Say he deserves. Y'all sound real good this morning. Say he deserves. He deserves. He deserves. Break it down. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Say yeah, 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 yeah. About the name Jesus out there. Shout Jesus. Can y'all break it down so we can, so we can, so we can call on the name? Shout Jesus. Yeah. Somebody call on the name. Shout Jesus. Janae, we gotta tell. Say. You know what? That's 
one of the modern day worship songs. Back in the day, they was probably say something like, my soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. And so what happens is uh, many of us come to church, we dance, amen, we shout, amen. We turn around three times, praise the Lord, amen. Then we go home and say, I had church. They say, what did, what did the pastor say? Uh, wait a minute, give me a moment. We had church. Well, today you want to be activated and you want to understand you are the church. You are the ecclesia of God. Point at somebody and let them know. Just look at them. You are the ecclesia of God. God created you. Point at somebody. And he purposed for you to be a witness of his power, to be a witness of his authority. Now I'm about to mess y'all up. And to be a witness of his goodness by what he blesses you with. People got to see something, y'all. People got to see something, y'all. <laughs> Psalms 23. Two, write this in your notes. Or make sure you get the CD. Two, and according to the Bible, is the number of agreement. So even in the natural, two people cannot come together and get married unless they first agree. In order to buy a vehicle uh, that takes one person who comes into an agreement that that's the vehicle that they want, that's the color they want, and that's what they're willing to pay. Is that right? And so then the owner or the dealership will pull out what's called a contract, right? And there is no physical contact with you owning anything until the contract has been signed. Isn't that right? Why is it only in the church that we come and think, if I dance and shout, everything, some kind of way, is going to work itself out? Well, God and his preeminence is so powerful, there are things that still work in our favor. Come on, God's been, that's why we say things like this. God's been better to me than I've been to myself. Come on, there's been times God worked out things we didn't even believe in to work out. But he worked it out. So he's a good God, right? Man, he works for us even when we're not believing in him to work for us. I never forget when I was homeless years ago on Joy Road and I was asking God, I was mad at God. But at the same time, I was hungry. And I remember crying out, God, if you real, feed me. Well, I didn't know then he, he spoke to me about a purpose that he had for me in the days to come that didn't look like where I was in that moment. He said something like this to me. Clarence, will you feed my sheep? Sheep? What sheep? Only sheep I know about are in the zoo. And why would you talk about me asking me to feed an animal? And I'm telling you, as a human, I'm hungry. Well, I found out years later when I got saved and gave my life to God that God had a purpose for me, and I didn't know that being a pastor is, is, is parallel. They use it biblically to, par to, 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 to let it be connected, and you can use it universally as a shepherd. And a shepherd tends to the sheep. A shepherd covers the sheep. A shepherd protects the sheep. A shepherd feeds the sheep 
not the letter of the word, but the spirit and the truth of the word. It causes the sheep now to grow strong and to have a sense of guidance and a sense of direction. That's what the shepherd does. I didn't know that. What he was telling me while I was saying I was hungry, he was saying, if you come into the purpose in which I called you, you will never have a problem with eating again. Why, how could he talk to me about feeding other people when I had a need? Well, you know he must have took care of me because I, I, I made it this far. All right? But it was a many, many, many years before I got to the place where I am now. Well, I came to let somebody know, I don't know who you are, but you're right on the verge of your breakthrough, your breakout, and your turnaround. You have been through many things down through the years, but now those things are about to work in your favor. Ah, oh, come on, come on. I, I, need you, I need you to understand it's according to your faith. It's according to your faith and your ability to believe God through his man of God this morning. So I had to, Elder Roy, say, yes, Lord. There is something, we don't say it as much as we used to, but there is a word that we have to get back in our lifestyle as Christians and in the church is yes, Lord. Huh? Yes to your will, yes to your way. I don't understand everything. God, I, I, I have to trust you. So I had to trust him. There's somebody you hear me today and you're in a dilemma in which you need to understand. You needed, you asked God to give you a word today, and the word for today is trust God. Because God is turning it in your favor. What that means is things that seem not to be working out for you are about to work out for you. And the things that's been coming against you are going to get behind you and be a part of your propelling. Yes, God's going to propel you into the place that you need to be, but you're not there yet. But I need somebody to have enough faith to trust in what you're hearing today. The men and women of God, we are called to bring you the good news. No, no, no trouble. Don't forget about the trouble. The trouble going to work for you. I said the trouble going to work for you. If, if you trust God, because what happens is you keep walking by faith no matter what it looks like. No matter what it seems like, you walk by faith. No matter what people say about you, you walk by faith. No matter the appearance of things, you walk by faith. And you always remember this. For every door that closes in your face, God will open up two doors that will take you further than the one door you depended on. Uh, he, I got, I, I got a little, I, I got a little, I, I heard a message to somebody. He didn't value you. Don't worry about him. God's got somebody that's going to value you. This, I'm talking to somebody, this man that was in your life devalued you. He brought you down, but God's the sending one that's going to bring you up. So don't worry about the closed door. Just celebrate the open door. Come on, tell somebody, don't worry about the closed door. Come on, praise God for the open door. Mm. Mm. Psalms 23. So we, so I had to come in agreement. Elder Rashawn, I had to come in agreement with God. I said, I don't understand what you're talking about, God, but I came in agreement. And he, long story short, and he blessed me. The Bible says there is a blessing that he'll bless you with exceedingly abundantly above all, all, all you can ask or think. I'm here to activate you into your... I want to activate you. I want you to start saying, amen, God. I'm in agreement. And when you say amen, after you leave here, I want you to go and start moving again toward the dream. Start moving again toward the vision. Because what God wants me to tell everyone that's here today, though your vision that he gave you, your dream tarries, it's coming to pass. But you have to get back. You have to get back on the road. There is a road, there is a pathway that God has made for you. And three, three, three is the number of divine order, divine completeness, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Everything that God did, he did through the power 
of agreement. The Bible says, Scripture says, a three-chord rope is not what? Easily broken. You might be able to break a string. You might be able to break a thread, but you ain't going to break no rope with your hands. A rope is not easily broken, is it? And those three chords are wrapped up together. So two, 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 and three. Why am I dealing with two and three? Because I just had you turn to Psalms 23. And so I'm decoding. I'm unlocking. Say that with me. He's decoding. He's unlocking. See, sometimes we're so happy to get revelation. Oh, somebody didn't preach you happy, but you didn't get delivered. It's easier for me to get delivered when I know that on the other side of my petition, participation, there is a promise that I can't make happen on my own. So if I know there's something promised to me, it makes it easier for me to work on me and get it right. Uh, <laughs> I need you to understand that, that I, didn't, I, I couldn't see it, but I came in an agreement with God the Father. One, God the Son. Two, God the Holy Spirit. Three, the three wrapped up in one I came in agreement with. Three plus two is five. Five is the number of grace. There is nothing that happens in the earth or happens in your life that works in your favor without God's grace. He did it, whether, he did it for you whether you deserved it or not. It was his unmerited grace. You didn't work for it. You know things shouldn't have turned out the way they did. Yeah, they didn't do you right, but there's a whole lot of folks you didn't do right, but God still worked it in your favor. So we're talking about his unmerited grace. So we dealt with the number two, power of agreement. We dealt with the number three, divine order. We dealt with two plus three, the two and three coming together, the number five. Five in, in the Bible is the number of Grace. Say that with me. It's the number of grace. Now I want you to look at verse 7. Because we're going to read verse 7, but I need you to understand what 7 means. 7 represents it being completed. All things are already done. Say that with me. All things for my life, according to the will of God, have already been finished in God before I showed up. This scripture is being decoded to unlock the way I see me so I can know now all things are working together for my good. The bad, the ugly, come on somebody, the mess is turning for my miracle. I need you to understand this. I need you to understand this because when we read this scripture, it is connected to all three of those numbers I just gave you. Go ahead, read, Pastor Robin. 23-7. For as he thinks in his heart. Stop, stop. Read, read that portion again. For as he thinks. Stop, read it again. For as, as he, he. As you. I'm unlocking the truth, but it's how you think about the truth I'm unlocking to you determines if you will walk in it. There was a woman, the Bible said, this woman had an issue of blood. Come on, stay with me, James. It said this woman had an issue of blood. Check this out. She had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And she finally got tired of her issues. The Bible says she went to all kinds of doctors. But she heard about this man that was radical. They only knew him as a man then. And his name was Jesus. And the Bible says that she said within herself, if I can just touch, if I can just get around this man. See, God will put people around you that he's already taken through the process. That their faith in God's ability to do for you what God has already done for them. And when you get around them, your faith, what is faith? Sit down, please. Finish reading that, uh, Pastor Robin. We'll go over to Hebrews 11.1 1, so we can see what faith is. Because faith is not a conversation. Faith is an action. I remember when I watched um, my, 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 my wife, Pastor Robin, I remember when she was in law school, and um, there was days she just wanted to quit. 
I mean, um, honey, you remember those days? I mean, tears would be rolling down your eyes and you would be sitting in your study with just stacks of books. Just stacks, and they didn't have no pictures. <laughs> so there wasn't no break, right? No. There was no pictures, and they were all case studies. Is that right? Where's Gary? Is Gary here? Come here, son. Hurry up. Come up here, Garrett. Because you know what we're talking about. This is my, one of my spiritual sons, Garrett's, and Garrett is in law school right now. And, and, and thank God that, that when you got here, Hearing, hearing, hearing.